What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with a channel favorite, Tony. Welcome back. Hello, hello. It's always good to have you. This is a deck that you showcased on the channel, I think maybe like three years ago. And I think to this day, it's one of my top videos ever. Yeah, this is back when water was, uh, yeah, just a spoiler, it's water. But uh, this is back when that deck wasn't as crazy as it is now. With all the new support, this is definitely something interesting. But I think back then, I don't have no idea why it performed so well. There's also a really cool one card combo that Tony's gonna be showing you guys at the end of this video. He just showed it to me. It's actually absolutely insane. But welcome back, everyone in the comment section. Say welcome back, Tony. And uh, with that being Glad said, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let you take over. Okay, yeah. So to, as I already mentioned, today the deck is water. This deck is probably one of my favorite decks right next to, at this point, Labyrinth. Just because I do enjoy not only the aesthetic, but the effects. I think there's a lot of cool lines that you can play with this deck, especially with the new support. And thank, thank God for the new support too, just because I feel like for the longest time, Fire has been getting all this cool support. Now we got water. And we finally have something that makes water, a deck that I think is, for a lot of people, a fan favorite playable. So getting in, I'm gonna just start by reintroducing the old one, starting with probably one of the really nice ones, uh, Three Mermail Abyss Taste. Abyss Taste can special summon itself from the hand by discarding any water monster. And if you do, on its on summon effect, it searches for any level four or level Mermail monster. Previously, this effect searched for pretty much was locked into Pike, or gun, which were decent targets, but were limited in its ability. As a result, this card was almost sometimes relegated to a one or two off. However, thanks to the new support, we actually have better Mermail targets, and that means that this card functions as both a starter as well as an extender at any point in the game. So you do want to have the three in here. With that being said, though, um, most of your lines don't actually necessarily require it. And the reality is, despite the fact that it searches for a lot of your pieces, in most cases, it ends up just being a seven to overlay with. From there, we then have two Pike. Uh, Pike used to be like this cool tempo engine. Now it's actually an efficient starter. Uh, it searches for any level three water monster, which doesn't actually have to be either a Nantian or a Mermel monster, which means it can also search for certain level three monsters like the Diva line that lets you do, uh, that lets you insulate from hand traps. But in most cases, this will search you for the two new water monsters that you got in the recent Rage of the Abyss set, which is Abyss Shrine or uh, Shadow Guards. And both these let you start plays from there. Uh, this alone I've seen is its own one card combo, but I will not go into it today. Okay. Yeah. From there, we then move on to the Atlantean side of things. So, whereas the Mermails were focused back in the day on the idea that you can send waters to get effects, the Atlanteans were the other half, where if they were sent to the graveyard for a water effect, you get additional benefits. The most prominent and powerful of this being right now, Neptibus, the Mer uh, Atlantean Prince. Uh, on the field, once per turn, you can dump a water monster, an Atlantean monster from your deck to add any Atlantean monster from your deck. This is the only effect that lets you trigger any Atlantean because it's sending it as a cost from the deck, any Atlantean from your deck from the grave, and as well as adding one. So it's essentially, in most cases, a plus two on its own. If that wasn't cracked enough, if this card is itself sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect, it revives any Atlantean except for a, a Neptibus. Which in a lot of cases, if you're, let's say, for example, discarding this off of a pike, lets you bring back something like a Dragoons, a level 4 monster, to make overlay plays for. Now, your most common target for dumping with Atlantean uh, Neptibus will be your three Dragoons. Man, these have gotten really expensive. If yeah. you want to max rate this deck, this, this is going to cost you. Yeah, <laughs> now, side, side note, this, is, this entire deck is max rated if you guys haven't noticed already. Yeah, so Dragoons is, I think... The quintessential Atlantean. When it's into the graveyard, it has an on-field effect. We're going to no ignore it. It lets your level three Atlanteans attack directly. This was used for an OTK in 2012, but it's not happening today. Uh, but its own effect, though, if it's sent to the graveyard for a water monster's effect, it searches for any sea serpent. These Atlanteans, this specifically, was made in a time where obviously the game was slower, and therefore the idea that this thing could be triggered more than once or twice per turn was very limited. As a result, this effect is not once per turn. And you'll find that in a lot of your games, you'll be abusing this effect by adding it back, dumping it several times over, to just continuously generate resources for all your other water discards. And this, as it turns out, searches for some very interesting things. Because as I mentioned before, this doesn't just search for a mermail or an Atlantean, it searches for a sea serpent, any sea serpent. And there's some pretty crazy ones. From there, we then have, of course, the two infantry. So one thing that you might find with this list compared to other lists is that I'm playing a more mid-range one. I think infantry is a very powerful card more than now than before. Back in the day, you were playing more marksmen because it popped set cards. But Atlantean Imp Heavy Entry, if it's a sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, pops a face-up card, which makes it great for board breaking. And in a lot of scenarios, having this in your hand and then triggering something to send it directly from your hand to the grave using something like your Abyss Teus or your Pike means that you also get to bait out an interaction going second that potentially can make your uh, make you building your board a little easier. 
It also has a very innocuous effect where on the field, it lets you normal summon an additional uh, Sea Serpent monster. That's this doesn't cool. come up, but in a weird number of scenarios, I have used this to put up on a second body just in a, to make a subpar Xyz monster when I need to. And by subpar Xyz monsters, uh, we are referring to the new stuff here. So one of the new Atlanteans we've gotten that allows us to do all that is called Mermail Shadow Bodyguards. If that doesn't, if, if the art and the name don't make sense, that's because in this recent wave, uh, Konami has decided that we don't have any reason to segment these two archetypes together, and now they're one and the same. Mermail Shadow Bodyguards is also an Atlantean monster. Oh, okay. So oh, in any scenario, it, anything that would interact with an Atlantean monster interacts with this the same way. It's also a sea serpent, so once again, it's searchable off of your uh, dragoons. But what's crazy about this is two things. First off, on the field, you can discard any card, not just a water monster, but any card, to turn all your water monsters to level 7. This triggers your Atlantean monsters, but more than anything, it sets up Xyz plays. When I was talking about heavy infantry making a subpar Xyz play, it's normal has only heavy infantry, normal summoning this afterwards, discarding a card, and then just rank 7ing from there. Which, as it turns out, is sometimes just enough to get you there. What's crazier though is if it's sent to the graveyard to activate that water monster's effect, it summons any level 4 or lower Atlantean or Mermel monster from your deck to the field. So it's like an extender. It's a full extender on its own. And it's any level 4 lower Atlantean or Mermel monster. So in some cases, it searches for Ineptibus, which itself is a oh. whole combo on its own. It could summon out Pike, which itself starts some combos on its own. And it also, in weird scenarios, I've used this just to summon Dragoons and I'm just overlaid with it. So it is actually a very solid card. However, Unlike Dragoons, because it's made in this era, it is a hard one to return for both effects, and that is something you want to be wary of when you're doing your combos. It's very easy to burn this one out at a wrong crucial moment, and then realize you do not have access to the pieces you need to when you do it. The other card you play is the new one called Abyss Shrine, the Atlantean Spear. This card is a little weird. Like the Shadow Bodyguards, this is treated as a Mermel monster. So, in its, in the, in, in, well, whereas this one is a Mermel monster, this one is an Atlantean, uh, or this is, this is a uh, Atlantean monster now. But they're both both. They're both both. Yeah. Uh, this card, while in the hand, can be, you can trip this card from your hand alongside any Atlantean or Mermel monster from your hand or field to search for any level 7 Aqua, Sea Serpent, or Fish level 7 monster and either special summon it or add it to your hand. In some builds, I, I, I know some somebody's cooking right now. In some builds, yes, this doesn't mean you can summon Deep Sea King Coelacanth. Interesting. We are not playing that here just because I think without the third pike, you do not have enough fish to play this card. But this card alone is very powerful. On its own, it's an extender. It's a weird, really awkward extender that lets you tribute on field Atlanteans that may have been negated or burnt out to then get on a different extender. In most cases, this will just be searching out your tits. However, because of the fact that it tributes on field, it's also a really funky way to get rid of an Eptibus on field to trigger the actual cost of the water effect. It also has a very subtle uh, in graveyard effect, shockingly, where while in the graveyard on your opponent's turn, it can be banished for you to discard a card as a cost to draw a card. Oh. Now, the cost part is the part that matters the most because it gives you a way to trigger an Atlantean effect on your opponent's turn by discarding it for that effect. The replacement is just nice, but realistically, it allows it to essentially double as a secondary form of disruption that your opponent does not see. And being level three, it means it's searchable off of your pipe. You can also discard this, the bubble card, essentially, exactly. right? Exactly. There you go. So the functional idea is that in a lot of your combos, you'll cycle through this, and at some point, you'll get one of these in your rotation. And from there, that means that at any point, regardless of what your board is, you have a graveyard disruption out of nowhere that replaces itself into a pop. And this pops any face-up card, so it doesn't any have to be a monster, card. right? It does not. It could be spell, continuous, field spell, oh, yeah. face-up card. There's a lot of scenarios where I think, especially against, this, uh, let's say, for example, Snake Eyes, it actually works really well to interact with their spell and traps that they put back in there. Yeah. Uh, the Bell Snake Eyes is just one of those things. Uh, the field spell is another. But yeah, this serves itself as a second disruption that also allows you to search for any of your it, it, it what is actually, ironically enough, previously unsearchable extenders. Tis, being as powerful as it was, was not a searchable card. And as a result of that, in a lot of ways, the, having this now gives you a way to use Tis as part of your combo lines instead of expecting to draw into it. Nice. And that, I believe, rounds up. Oh, no, wait, we got one more. Uh, we got the one gun still. Oh, of course. Uh, gun is still a really solid card. Uh, if it's discarded, specifically discarded, from your hand to the grave, doesn't actually have to be for a cost this time, but it has to be discarded, it revives any Mermel monster. In most cases, this gets you an additional body. Now that these uh, you have these two, which are also Mermails on their own, they also are revival targets, and there are certain lines that use this to revive this so you can do the level seven plays. But in most cases, this is just something that you could still search off of your taste that 
essentially is an extender when you have another discard. However, the fact that it, did, it does require itself to be specifically discarded means it also doesn't work with all your lines. Specifically, mm -hmm. with Shrine. Shrine tributes the monster. So if you tribute your gun, it will not trip. And that, I believe, rounds off the core Mermel Lelantian side of things. From there, we actually have a lot of just decent water support because as I point out, the deck doesn't actually exactly require you to have um, Mermel or Lelantians. A lot of it does now, but a lot of the other stuff still work fantastic with it. Specifically, probably the most powerful one is the Moving Glacier. Crazy card. This card, I think, to this day is has stood the test of time uh especially summon itself from your hand while you have five waters exactly in your grave and when it's summoned it just discards two from your opponent's hand in a lot of games like i think a lot of people tend to look at this card and think the deck is going to end up being hand loopy and that is not entirely true the idea of this card now is that it's used to reduce your opponent's options and you're in the doing math off your opponent's game if your opponent starts with six cards wait if you go first and your opponent starts with six cards tearing two of them means that you now only have to count the number of interactions you have versus the number of cards they have so discarding any two cards regardless of what they are reduces their options if you manage to somehow tear further cards in the hand or get hand knowledge this gives you even greater impact because now you know exactly what you're up against mm. and can build with this this just reduces the number of plays your opponents can do do not look at this and say oh i'm going to build a deck where i'm going to rip like eight out of your hand and all, all your cards out of your hand because i think it's very easy to do that and then get punished by decks that may not either a care or b can disrupt you to the point where you don't get that far yeah okay yeah. The a bigger issue with this card, however, is if it leaves the field, uh, it, you, you skip your battle phase, which shockingly can be relevant in a deck that can OTK. However, this only applies if it leaves the field. If it's overlaid and then sent to the graveyard, it does not trigger. And as you'll find out, because of the fact that we now have Shadow Guards, we can turn this into a level 7 and then overlay with it. That's crazy. Yeah. You finally have a way to just dodge your own uh, Moulin Glacier Lock. From there, we then have two um, Deep Sea... Mistral, there we go, yeah. This is, weirdly enough, I have forgotten what the English name of this card is. Mistral can discard itself from the hand, that, at least the relevant fact is, you discard itself from the hand alongside any water monster to look at your opponent's hand and then banish one of their cards until the end phase. Mm. This is like a temporary forceful sentry, basically. Uh, not only does it, one, discard, once again, that's a key word because it means you can trigger gun with this, um, the reality is it gives you hand knowledge. It gives you hand knowledge in a way that lets you tear out things like Nibiru or Dominus Impulse that you know might stop your place and gives you the idea of what you might have uh, have in the future stop your place. Okay. In a weird way, you will fire this just because a lot of times this is a way to bait out things like Fool Wasps so that you know exactly what you're up against. Yep. But it also, in I guess in line with that Moulin Glacier, lets you make it so that that Moulin Glacier rip that comes later is more impactful. If you're tearing a card that you know your opponent can't use anyway, you make sure those next two discards actually hurt them more. So this, alongside the hand knowledge, is, it's something I do recommend playing at least two or three of. I think this is a card that, in a format where now we have more hand traps than ever, it is a card that lets you have that like knowledge to play against your opponent. Okay. Granted, discarding two for like nothing is exactly sometimes a little risky, but given the fact that you're discarding, you might be discarding things like Dragoon or Shadow Guards, which then just combo with it from there, you generally don't really care. Okay. Now, the last water monster we're playing, I'm 90% sure, yep, is the true Ron Adrian. Uh, I should say Ron Adrian is a monster that's very similar to uh, Taste in that it can special on itself by discarding a water monster from hand. If you do so, you summon a level 3 token onto the field alongside it. It is a uh, level 7 tuner monster, which means with that level 3 token, you can make a level 10 synchro monster. Which, shockingly enough, despite the fact that this do in doing this, you lock yourself into waters, there's actually some really solid water level 10s. Uh, Changing, if you want to look at that one, but I'm playing the other option, which is the Jameer Adrian. Both of these are actually really powerful level 10s that this lets you give you access to. But I also want to point out that while this does lock you into water monsters, this doesn't actually lock you into anything but water monsters. So you can also just use those tokens and this card and just link summon. Oh, it's okay. not locked toward just synchro summoning. And that line means that sometimes if you need to make a quick link to a water monster, like potentially, for example, Coal and Enemy, a really powerful water link to, this is just an easy way to do so while also triggering water effect. But in a lot of cases, this is a card that, in a very similar vein to, I think, Teus before, it's a random discard of water. Whereas everything else in this deck requires you to either normal summon or commit something, you could just fire these effects straight from hand, discarding something like a, a random water monster, let's say, for example, like infantry, yep. and start your plays off and force your opponent to potentially have to react on the fly. Whereas things like uh, normal summoning Neptibus evokes a response that might just end your turn. This doesn't really commit to any game action, but it does create a huge problem for your opponent. An uh, infantry pop followed by a level 10 monster that could run over something and then also counter another negate is really powerful 
and having the, that just that random line does give you a bit of flexibility when going second but while also having something to do going first so you kind of have some like in-engine breakers yes. it's, it's it's itself an in-engine breaker but i think it's the best way to look at it it's, it's a card that allows you to build a board but while also doing so without having to commit to some of the choke points that i think a lot of other decks or a lot of players might look to take uh counter okay with that being said i also want to point out like with everything in this deck it's a water so if at it's most desperate you can pitch this for cost of any other water effect yep. lastly for the watchers we have a, a unique one here we have two fenrir and one tier limits cash Tira. Uh, this is probably going to get me, at least with the Mermel community, kind of roasted, and I can accept that, but I do like this package a lot. The idea behind this package is that it gives me a better uh, game going second, while also giving me a, a much, I guess, more stable game going first compared to something, let's say, like Gamma Seal. Yeah. Why do I mean that? Well, Gamma Seal, for example, if you go first, Function does nothing but discard itself for water. Venue, on the other hand, can special summon itself and search a water, which means you get one additional body on top of that that can still be used to then pay for a water later on. Never mind the fact that if you're going second, this thing can sometimes clear very basic boards on its own while still getting you that water, but it's also a level seven, which in certain scenarios, if you're going to be making certain Nixies monsters, is a body that you can use. And when it becomes a body that you end up sending to the graveyard, it actually turns on the tier match cast tier that you add to banish it from the grave to add as a secondary extender as well. So this is a stable play that can turn into multiple different options depending on how you utilize this card. But worst comes to worst, this is still a cash tier offender on the field that your opponent has to consider if you just leave it there. I was going to say, it's just a disruption if you go first. It's an extender and a board breaker going second. Yeah, and like lot. and like very similar to Ronnie Jordan, it's a card that your opponent kind of has to answer, and you can do it before your opponent actually has to commit anything. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, that's why I like this package. Uh, granted, like, even this tier limits cash tier has come up in a lot of situations where just as a what level seven water extender, I can just summon it and then overlay to make some my, uh, make something like a Gaius. Nice. Yeah. And that rounds off the monsters. From there, we then have some spells. Uh, we still have the one for one because Neptibus is functionally a one card combo to your whole field, and this is a way to access it. We still have the one um, Abyss Scale. This is a powerful card still. Uh, while on the field, mandatorily, when your opponent activates a sp uh, resolves a spell, you can, this launches itself to negate that spell effect. Um, this actually got better, weirdly enough, because now with the new uh, Neptibus Link monster, you can use this effect more than once. That's crazy. Yeah, and the 800 additional boost sometimes actually lets you OTK, but it, uh, without the uh, without the the uh, Megalo that we used to be playing, that doesn't come up as much. Uh, we actually then, however, have a new Abyss scale in our, in this case, an Abyss Sting Triana. This card is, it's premature bail. It's premature bail. When you activate, you summon any Mermel or Atlantean monster from your graveyard. So it revives anything. It revives level sevens, it revives level fours. It lets you cover, make plays whatsoever. It also has an additional effect in the graver where you can banish it to shuffle back three Aqua, Fish, or Sea Serpent monsters back into your deck, which actually comes up a lot because uh, throughout the course of your combo, you actually do burn through a fair number of your pieces and you this gives you a bit of a grind game. Okay. Because we're also playing the Fenrir, pa uh, the Cash Tier package, which is conveniently not linked to anything else in the deck, you also get to play the one small world. Oh, not oh. These act as small world bridges, yes. Nice. Hilariously, this gives you a actually cleaner small world bridge with less brain power required than actually having just to play small world and hoping to God you can actually match the things that like conveniently work out. And then from lastly there, we have the one call of the grave and two uh, cross up, just because you want to do uh, hand traps. Now, you may have point, you may have noticed, wh where's the hand traps if I'm playing yeah. all this? And the answer is, I don't know. I spent all my money on this deck and I didn't actually have time to buy any of the impulse or any no, of that no, stuff. No, please, please. So uh, please. with that being said, this is where I give, I guess, a caveat. There is a three to four card slot additional that you can play in your deck that functionally works for your hand traps. Uh, my preference is the one roll and two dominance impulse. Uh, obviously, I'm also playing Imperm, but that, I think that falls under the I'd rather use it than cross out it kind of thing. Yeah. But I think these two are probably the most hurtful. At the end of the day, it's as much as I want to like include a Fool Loss as well as a Prolia, I think there is arguments against either just because your deck still is somewhat required on you having waters. Yeah. And that is kind of the big problem with playing hand traps, I think, still. Regardless of how powerful these cards are and the fact that Neptibus itself is a one card combo, you also cannot deny that sometimes that if that one card play does get negated, you still have to rely on your other stuff, yeah. consuming waters in your hand to do plays. And hands where you see no waters or see not enough waters actually can be very detrimental. So playing cards like Fruwas, which is a wind, 
don't really work out. Playing cards like Ash, same problem. Perulia is a really weird one though. Uh, Perulia is a level four water monster. And more than anything, it's a level four water monster that's under 1500 attack, which means it actually has some weird combo line extensions in this deck if you want to play it, where you can actually, it's one of the only level four targets you could revive in this deck with Coral and Enemy, which means if you need an additional level four water monster, at some point you fired a Perulia uh, Perul at some point, it does actually act as a way to make a Bahamut Shark by reviving uh, through Coral and Enemy. I feel like Perulia in this deck would be more of a side deck card though, right? Yeah, all these cards I think fall better into that side deck range. I do think the this Dominus Impulse is good. Is main, good. Main deck, yeah. It hurts that I don't have them, but uh, <laughs> the, like, the Dominus Impulse would be just a card that you could also use. I wouldn't recommend playing three of them just because your deck has the ability to like not to play, uh, play through boards and opening multiple of these is extra awful then because not only is it not something you can use it's also something that you cannot activate more than one per turn but yeah from there of course you still have the three uh imperm just because it's, it's not okay. a bad trap it's good to hand trap one way or another but then the last one we have is a virtue stream uh let's see here virtue stream a virtue stream is a crystal deck for waters if you target a water target two cards your opponent controls blow them over both yeah. up that is really good uh it's played in here because you can actually search for it and more than anything, it's graveyard effects also super relevant. In the graveyard, you can banish it to target a monster on the field. Uh, if it's a, not a water monster, it becomes a water monster. Which, hilariously enough, I actually have used to turn Fenrir to a water oh, to no. make an easy guy. Else. I have been that desperate. But if you do target a water, it just can't be destroyed. Uh, the next time you destroy a battle, can't be. Oh, nice. So it is actually a, uh, dis uh, it is a disruption that converts into a protection that you can search in this deck. So it is a card that I think, like, because you can search into it, it is actually worth playing. And uh, that rounds off the extra. This is 41. If you want an additional, like, card to that hand trap package, it becomes a 42 card deck, which is perfectly fine because your deck now has so many easy ways to access the piece it needs. Nice. Yeah. So uh, from there, we will go into our extra deck. Which is blinged out, by the way. This is... It's close. It's so close. It's blinged out. Okay, so starting from there, we have the two Abyss Giles. Uh, if there's any limitation right now for any player who sees this deck list and wants to build this deck, it's gonna be this. This card had never got reprinted since Abyss Rising, which means this card, even as an ultra rare, sits around $40 to $50. Dang. But this card is powerful. Two level seven water monsters to make. On the field, you can detach it uh, material to just negate the effects of all your opponent's monsters with less attack than it. It being a 2800 means that it, for most cases, that's everything. Yep. It also prevents level five or higher monsters from attacking, which in a format where Nazmina and actual fusion monsters exist, can actually stop a lot of uh, aggression. I've played this against uh, Whitewoods and Nazmina de boards, and if they cannot find a way to get rid of this, they just cannot even kill me through this. Yeah. Um, but it also has a secondary purpose in this deck, and that's because it now can be used to make your new Poseidra. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name, but this Poseidra requires three level seven <laughs> monsters, but it can also just be slapped on top of any uh, Mermel or Atlantean Exceeds monster. So in this case, you can make Gaios, uh, maybe use the destruction, and then slap this on top, and then work from there. What, the, what does this do though? Um, by detaching two materials from it, which conveniently you'll have even after detaching one for Gaios, you can send any water monster from your deck to the grave as a cost, and then non-target bounce three things on the field's big hand. Three. Three things. Amazing. Up to three, sorry. It doesn't even have to be three. You could just clear a whole field with this card. And that is insanely powerful. Just because it triggers a water from deck. It's ironically the only other way to trigger water outside of Neptivus from your deck. But it also clears three things out of your opponent's field. And if that wasn't enough, if the succeed summon card is sent to the graveyard in any way, you can discard any card from your hand and then just revive three level three or lower water monsters. It's an ins it's insane. So it breaks boards and then it makes boards because you just summon three. Correct. So it's a soul charge. And when you think about the idea of this as, uh, p uh, you can think about this in like a number of different ways. On one hand, it is a crazy going send card. Making guys detaching material to bait out a, a disruption and then slapping this on top if they don't clear this to then bounce three more, knowing that even if your opponent does negate this and kill this, you bring back three is an insane amount of advantage. Crazy on your opponent and a lot of pressure on your opponent but going first it is also just three bodies that you convert into at any point you can convert your sevens into three uh into three level threes and that's just link material yeah this is a monster that if you link away does actually extend and you will part of the reason we are playing two of each is partially because chances are you're going to use half of it to actually combo off and then the other half to actually break boards the long term okay one other thing i do want to point out which i think a lot of people miss you can just hark make this you don't actually have to just slap it on top of a Mermel or Atlantean Exceeds monster. It does, you could just overlay three level sevens, which in the case of something where we're playing Fenrir's, uh, it does come up. And weirdly enough, whereas all the other stuff is a hard once per turn, um, that bounce effect is not. Oh, interesting, okay. The only thing that's hard once per turn on this effect is the effect to overlay on top of a Mermel Atlantean Exceeds. So there have been games where I have you can, like, fired this. One and then make one on top. Yep. 
Oh, shoot. And in both cases, that's six bounces. Would not say that's like a super relevant scenario, but it is six bounces that you have to consider and you want to be aware of when you're going into that playing second situation. Crazy. From there, we then have to a Bahamut Shark. Uh, Bahamut Shark, I think it's just the quintessential water monster, the best rank for a water monster. Detach material, summon any rank three or lower uh, water exceeds monster. Not only does this, because level four means that you overlay a uh, Dragoons and a Pike together to make this, if you detach that Dragoons, it triggers again. Crazy. Which in most case, and in most cases, what you're gonna grab in this case is that Toad. Toad is Toad. It's Omni Negate. If it sends itself, it adds back to water. This actually becomes very funny because uh, that water recursion used to be just shuffled itself back in the deck. Uh, now you can use it to actually do some weird lines where you actually grab back the same infantry you sent earlier to then send the infantry again. The pop again. And like, cause unlike like very similar Dragoons, the infantry is not hard once a turn. Uh, however, you actually have a new target as well. Uh, and that target is La Virtue Dragon. La Virtue Dragon, when special summon, searches for that Virtue Stream I showcased earlier. Which means that on summon, if you summon off of a hum truck, it is actually theoretically just two disruptions. It can, however, also detach a material from any Xyz monster you control, not it's just itself, to then add back any Sea Serpent aqua or fish monster from your graveyard crazy which means if you do some of this off of the bahamut shark cool it searches for the virtue stream and then detaches the other material off of your bahamut shark to grab you any water back crazy uh which it's just like it's, it's a fantastic recursion on a monster that like is functionally free it also in a lot of cases you also can just hard make this because with the three level threes that you bring back with Poseidra, it is just something you could overlay into and then it just like is something you access late game uh, which is really solid as well. And if you keep it on the field next turn, you can then just detach its other material, detach the material from something else, and then just actually just remake a board that way. Nice. Then from there, for Seize Monsters, we're playing the one Dweller, just because Dweller is Dweller, and uh, against even like something like you bell this card is wonderful. And then the one Stealth Dragon. Uh, this is debatable. You can get away with playing a second Toad. In all honesty, there have been games because I made this hard that I wondered why I don't have a second Toad for the second Bahamut Shark in the deck. But I do actually sometimes like this card because it interacts so well against five. Uh, have fun popping a fire monster that doesn't exist. Doesn't work. Yeah. And also, uh, you, in, in some games, if you're like somehow going to time after going first, you can also pop your phone's monster and burn them. Nice. It's time. Some of the better Mermo players have at this point cooked up actual time combos that involve penguins of all things to like win in time going first that's crazy anyway going to the link monsters we have the one area this is because you do want just the generic water uh, seas that you can make uh, a lot of your effects specifically the uh shrine and i believe the shadow bodyguards lock you into water monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn which means that sometimes if you do need to wind a way to get rid of that friend rear you do need to make a water a water seas monster that doesn't explicitly require just only waters. And sometimes the area just becomes that kind of nice target. And the mirror match, it also wins games in its own way, but I'm, who's playing the mirror match today? But then we have the coal and enemy. Coal and enemy, uh, two waters, lets you target any water monster in your graveyard with 1500 less attacks by someone to his own opponent to. Nice. This is a great way for just an uh, extender that just any of your, your most likely your Bahama shark and another monster overlay into to continue your place from there. We then have the one uh, Abyss Lacia. I think that's the name, Abyss Lacia. On your opponent's turn, it lets you discard a water monster from your hand to search for any Mermel monster. This was the one of the few ways to get Teus back in the day, but it only worked on your opponent's turn. Now, because you have so many ways to get into that infantry, this lets you discard infantry on your opponent's turn to pop a card while adding any other Mermel to your hand. For follow-up. For follow-up. Yeah. If it dies by your opponent, however, I believe it dumps a water to search for anything again. Nice. So it's a really solid card, but in most cases it's used just to trigger infantry another time. And in most cases, you'll probably want ladder into this thing instead. Neptibus the Mermel King. Or Mermel King Neptibus. This card has two really powerful effects. First off, or actually three powerful effects. First off, anything this thing points to can't be targeted, or any water monster this card points to can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects. Protection. So if you want to make three disruptions underneath this thing, cool, your opponent has to get through this before that. Secondly, if a mon water monster be sent from your hand or field to the graveyard to activate a uh, just to activate effect, you could take an, equip uh, an Abyss card from your deck or graveyard and either equip it or add it to hand. What that means is that you can use it to equip this directly from deck or add this for extenders whenever you discard or send any water to do anything, which basically means as long as you breathe, this card will equip one of these. And then part of the combo you're gonna show off, you can actually use this twice because of this. Yes, see, while this card is a hard one's return, that does not change the fact that uh, if this is already equipped and this gets launched, at any point, if you choose to discard another water monster, this can be equipped to the field. So this actually becomes two uh, water disruptions. Lastly, uh, this is, I guess, a really odd one. If it, like, very similar to Lacia, if it dies, it searches for a Mermaid Atlantean. Oh, that's good. Uh, I don't think that effect 
really comes up as much, but it does actually make your board somewhat sticky, just because combined with this and this, clearing your, your opponent will have to contend with not only clearing your field and you clearing your field through everything like virtue stream and infantries, but also the fact that as they try to clear your field, you're just building your board next turn and it, there's likely the Poseidon just coming up. Yeah. And then lastly, our level 10 for our choice is the Jamiri Drive. I love Jamiri Drive. First off, 3000 attack, big body, obviously. It's not quite the same body as something like Chenging, but its effect is wonderful. Uh, at any point, you can activate this effect, make all your monsters unable to be banished or destroyed by card effects, your opponent's card effects. Cool, that's just blanket wire protection on a field that at this point, combined with this, couldn't be targeted by anything as well. Yeah. Uh, if you activate this in response to something though, and that card is either on the field or in the graveyard, you banish all copies of it. Oh, nice. So again, something for example, like let's say a Snake Eyes player, right? You can use this in a very, like there's a lot of scenarios where they, because they're all one of right? You can activate this in response to the pop bar to, uh, to revive or the Ash to search. And cool, not only have you protected your board, coming up, but you also got rid of their one ups yeah. and that is super powerful. This also means that like, even against situations where you're playing against Fiendsmith you're, or Ubel, you're getting rid of crucial pieces at certain junctures that they, you know they're going to recur. Yep. And at the same time, it makes it very hard for them to also clear on top of that. Yeah, and lastly, I believe it also revives itself, but I've never used that effect. Yeah. I'm just going to bring that up here for someone who, uh, I guess, has that bigger brain there. And that, I believe, rounds off the main deck. Uh, before we get into the combo, though, I'm going to answer a few really quick questions about why certain things are not in the deck anymore. Okay. Specifically, one of them being that of uh, Megalo. I think a lot of people, when they see this deck, think, like, look at Megalo as, like, an auto include. And the reality is, Megalo has just gotten worse and worse over time. A double attack in 2400 that searches for, at this point now, two different spells, one being extended, one being an, uh, uh, an LTK tool with this card, is really good. But discarding two waters to activate this effect is really, really costly. And sometimes you just don't have, you don't have the it. ability to do so. You'd rather discard one to do something else than have this. And that's kind of the issue. It becomes a card where you feel like half the time you want to summon this off a shrine more than anything and attack with it. But then combined with the fact that if you're playing something like a Biscuit, sometimes you can't even attack yourself. Yeah. So it doesn't, it, it just got worse and worse over time. And I, while I love this card, I think the fact that it discards two in an era where card advantage has become so tight, you cannot get away with this getting negated. Yeah. And it will not get negated. Other cards that are, like, are worth discussing, why not D.Va? In most cases, D.Va used to be good because that two acts of Neptibus. And as I pointed out, Neptibus sometimes is a whole combo on its own. But this is Ash Bait, whereas Neptibus is not. And yeah. you have lines where you can play around Ash, but some of those lines require you to commit your normal summon to, to do so. This, committing this to your normal summon and getting Ash, actually can just stop you from doing anything at all. Yeah. Just because also that level 2 is super awkward now. Yeah. Whereas level 3 lets you make 10 with a 7, you really can't make much of this. And then lastly, I guess, because I know someone's going to ask, why not Marksman? Uh, set cards are all chainable, this format. And as it turns out, what's crazy, what, what I've learned about this is that if you're talking to a set card and they chain it, it actually doesn't destroy it at all. Oh. So, in a format where everything can either be flipped up immediately, even if it's a continuous card, this does actually a whole lot of nothing. It can bait out a lot of, like, traps, like, in, like, out of sequence for your opponent, but it's also just, like, I'd rather just have the infantry to break up. It, it used to be better when, like, battle traps were a thing. Yeah, for this. it used to be better when your opponent actually couldn't do anything with them. Yeah. And I think, like, that covers a good chunk of, like, what certain, like, what has been removed. I, I don't wouldn't advocate playing Spear ever again. Deep Sea, uh, the, the search spell would be good if it didn't require you to actually banish a water first, which means you had to commit to the game to do it first. So it's not that great. And then you don't need more than one gun just because it's a hard one spell. Yeah. And that kind of rounds off the, uh, I guess, the construction of the deck. So let's talk about combos then. I'm uh, gonna reverse this map so it's easier for the viewers to see what I'm gonna be doing. So the combo I'm gonna talk about today is only gonna require, it's a one card combo, but you do need to, you do need any discard. So let's say it's a one card combo. 1.5 let's say. With a discard. Yeah. And all it requires is Nephthibus. Crazy. All right. So what happens is you're gonna normal summon your Nephthibus and you're gonna activate Nephthibus' effect. And, and this is in your hand. And, yep, this is in my hand and then you just have nothing else. You're going to use Nephthibus' effect here to send a, I hope you can see this, uh, the Shadow Marksman, or Shadow uh, Guards, to add a Dragoons. This will trigger the Shadow Guards to summon a Pike from the deck, since it summons any level four the uh, Murmur Monster. Now, Pike on summon will trigger, sending the Dragoons you have added from your hand to the grave to search any level three water, in which, in this case, you're gonna be searching out your Abyss Shrine. Since Dragoons were sent to the graveyard to activate this effect, which is a water monster effect, it will then also trigger to allow you to add preemptively 
you're more glacial. This, com now, this combo is insane. Now, I will preface, if you actually end up having like more water than hand, this is also a scenario where you can choose to instead add Minstrel off of this effect and use that to also tear a card earlier. But in this case, we're going off of the fact that we have, let's say, the least amount of cards possible. From there, we're going to activate this shrine in our hand, tributing it alongside the Neptibus on our field to search for any level 7 water monster from our deck. This or is where you get, uh, get TS, right? This is going to grab a TS. Uh, in some scenarios, you can also just use it to grab this, but I do actually just like grabbing this just because it gets me into Gunned. But in that scenario, since we sent the Neptibus to the graveyard to activate Shrine's effect, this will trigger it to bring back... Dragons. Insane. Two level fours. Now you're going to overlay both these level fours, put them in the EMZ explicitly. You want to, I'm going to make that really clear to make your Bahama Shark. This is your fourth summon, which means if you detach this, okay. your summon out your toad, toad, you've made toad on five summons, and because you detach dragoons, you search again. So, so nib proof. This combo is nib proof because you have toad. Yep. And then you're just abusing Dragoon. And Dragoon will search you the infantry. Now, you're wondering, why am I using the infantry? It's because I want to get into rotation. But you now have four waters. You're going to discard that infantry to summon out that Taze. This will trigger Taze. In fact, this will also trigger infantry because it's mandatory, but it, you have nothing to pop, so, eh, whatever. Uh, but Taze will then proceed to search for any uh, low four, lower Mermail or Lantern monster. I recommend searching Gun, but in a lot of cases, you can also just use it to search out um, the uh, another shrine and then have it loaded up. But from there, you now have five waters, and that means boom, you can now special summon out that uh, abyss, um, that Moulin Glacier, tear two cards out of your opponent's hand. So rip two. Yep. From there, you're then going to link these two away. You're then going to summon out that uh, Colon Enemy. Colon Enemy will then activate, targeting a one-on-one -on -one to a 1500 less attack from your grave. You'll bring back that Shadow Squads. From there, you'll then activate Shadow Squads effect, discarding a card from your hand to make every water monster on the field level seven, including this, uh, this uh, Moulin Glacier. But this also will trigger the effect of the gun you just discarded, to bring back that taste. How much this matters? Probably not as much. You're gonna overlay these two monsters to make Abyss Gaius. And then from there, you'll overlay on top of that into that Poseidra. Really enough, in this weird moment, you can also just overlay all three to make Poseidra and then not have to like have an additional like uh, body that way. But yeah, well, we, don't, we, we were fine with this. But from there, we're then gonna link these two away. Sum it out. Our Neptibus. This, in turn, will trigger the effect of our Poseidon Grave. We'll discard a card to summon back three waters from our graveyard. We're going to summon back the Shadow Guards, the Shrine, and that gun. In any other scenario, this if you haven't noticed throughout this whole combo, we've set up exactly three waters into our grave. Yeah. And that is pretty much the only reason why we did this TS line half the time anyway. But from there, we're then going to overlay these two level threes. Uh, these two level threes, yep. These two little phase actually. I don't need this, this, so this can go to the grave. But we're then you use these two to make the Virtue Dragon. The Virtue Dragon will then trigger on summon to search for our Virtue Stream from our deck. Cool, now we have two pops now. And then from there, we're then going to detach a material from this card to then add back any Sea Serpent from our grave. We're going to add back an infantry. Okay. In doing so, we'll trigger the Neptibus' effect. Since a one monster was sent to the graveyard to activate an effect, boom, equipped. Crazy. I realistically, I just want to point out you could have also triggered this effect when you discarded from Sidious effect. So Either I'm way. just doing it because I forgot. And then lastly, we're gonna link these two monsters away and make a Bislation. We're then going to set this, preferably putting these in zones where we don't lose the imperm. That's in your hand. And this is our hand, and that is our field passing into our opponent's turn. So what does this actually mean for your opponent? Well, first off, uh, none of these three, none of these two can be targeted. Realistically, the only one that's relevant is this one. But at the end of the day, target protection is great. This Neptibus is also thirty two hundred, so your opponent's probably not running this over. Yep. At any point that your opponent decides to do their combos or activate a spell, this will fire to launch itself. One negate. So, so one so spell negate. So keep in mind, you've ripped two, so they only have four cards on their turn. You've ripped two, they draw a card, they have four cards. Right. They activate a spell, negate. Yes. So they're down to three cards. They start committing their plays, you fire the Lacia first. You discard the infantry, search for any Mermel monster. I, in this case, prefer to search for Teus. In doing so, this triggers the infantry to pop a card. However, because you sent a water monster to activate an effect, you also yep. trigger Neptunus to re-equip this. So, so far, you've destruct they have two cards left in their hand, because you've popped a card and you've negated a card. Yes, so they have two cards left in the hand now. And this baits out a third. At any point, you choose to, however, activate the Omni Negate of that Toad, sending a, I believe, any... I believe it sends any Aqua monster, right? Yeah, I don't think it has to send itself. Yeah. 
which can be really funny because sometimes uh, you actually have, you can actually end up sending like other water aqua monsters that you may leave on the field. But let's ignore that for now. But let's say, for example, you choose to send a toad. Yeah. When toad is sent to grave to negate, that's another card of the hand. You use its uh, water effect, uh, ingrave effect, add back infantry. Yep. Now infantry's back in your hand and you're wondering, well, what does that do? Well, let's say in worst case scenario, we first fire off that virtue stream. We want to use it to target this and pop it and pop two of our opponent's cards. Yeah. Now in the grave, it also means that we can protect these from being short of battle, which means this can be used later to occur. But what this also means now, after all that, if your opponent still has plays, you at any point can just choose to fire this Abyss Shrine from the grave, banishing it, discarding the infantry once again to draw another card, pop which in turn card. triggers the infantry again to pop another card. So this combo leaves you on two disruptions with this, Infantry twice, so that's four pops, or four disruptions. The Virtue is going to be another two, two pops, pops, so that's six disruptions. Toad is seven. Yep, that's a seven, seven interaction board. Uh, and your opponent will only ever have four cards. With only have four cards, not including the fact that, considering that you just saw me discard a water and search this, I still have a six-card hand. Oh, that, yeah, because it's only a 1.5-card combo. Yes. So you have full follow-up. I have essentially rebuilt, I have a six-card hand, which follow-up, which is, this is a crazy word, on my follow-up, this is what happens. I'm going to detach the second of, uh, let's say I'm going to draw another card turn, right? Uh, whatever it is, second round I draw, and I, this is what I do when I organize a deck. Uh, I'm going to detach for the Virtue Dragon again. I'm going to add back this ne uh, Nepopis. You may have noticed that the card I detached was Shadow Bodyguards, which will then proceed to trigger, and I'll get to summon out from my grave the other Pike. Pike will then trigger discarding this from my hand. This time I'm going to search for the Minstrel. This will, however, trigger the Neptibus in my grave to bring back Dragoons. Yeah. I'm going to overlay these two. Go into Bahamut again, potentially? Uh, in most cases, actually, weirdly enough, I prefer to go into this. Oh, Dweller also boosts your monsters, because they're all water. I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm going for the kill. From there, I'm then going to discard two. Let's see, I want to rip a card from hand, but I still have that Teus, right? Yeah. I'm going to discard another water monster, especially on the Teus. Doesn't really matter if I search the Teus, but let's say for the sake of it, I'm going to search this, right? This will, however, trigger the Neptibus another time. I'm gonna search for this. Yeah. I'm gonna activate it. Something back. The other one. Hopefully these two. Or, hilariously enough, I could also just use it to summon back the Gaios, but I wouldn't. I I, I need another. Mizuchi is also equipped to someone at this it's point. Still so it's still equipped to this. 800 boost. Yes. So. Uh, we're gonna make another Gaios. If our opponent starts a field, we can use the detach to negate their field if we want to. But then we're gonna slap on top the Poseidon and then detach two materials, sending what is most likely going to be. A second infantry to bounce me pop one yeah you're going for game with this board this is over 8k damage on field and uh your opponent also has have a graveyard effect at all i have for neglected to activate just the yeah dweller, dweller, any so the dweller, dweller means no graveyard either yeah so this essentially you you have like a full board clear into a kill off of one card alone and a discard just to end like what six cards in hand this and in most cases what ends up being is that any other card in your hand is going to be like hopefully in that case is either going to be like an imperm or dominus impulse or something. Just because you have them. But otherwise, you hold those cards because you have the ability to play through your opponents. This is insane. So, Tony, I want to say a big thank you. I know it's an in-depth profile, in-depth combo, but it's really important because I feel like Mermel is an older deck that got new support, so a lot of the newer players can now kind of understand what they do and how well they synergize. Thank you again so much. And if you guys want to see Tony again on the channel, let me know in the comment section down below. Tony, I'm going to be honest with you. I still get comments to this day asking for your return. So this is your official return, and what better <laughs> deck to do it than than with with water? So with that being said, I want to say like I know I think if you're if you're one of the more experienced Marmel players looking at the deck profile, I imagine that you probably know see like chinks in my lines, and I can I'm willing to accept that. I think the deck is extremely complicated just because it it plays on a very older axis. It doesn't play on the line of cards make more cards. It tries to. But it goes into the idea of cards trade for cards to get other cards. Yep. And as a result, whereas this is a one card line, there is actually a bunch of other ways you can play this deck yeah. that lets you play through different things depending on your own, not only your deck construction, but your lines. Uh, if you want to play against Droll, this is where Coelacanth actually is a line that you can go into that allows you to do so. If you want to play uh, beyond just this board and make like, for example, there are boards you can make double toad uh, and a um, double toad and Malaysia and this is the same thing and with a Jameer as well. And that requires additional cards. I haven't gotten into that. It's something that I think like you, I do recommend you just continue to experiment with yeah. the newer players because it is a deck that I think is super complicated, but super rewarding to play. Uh, as for the idea of why I haven't returned, I think it's an anxiety thing more than anything. I am perfectly fine being here. If I ever choose to return to my channel, that is its own uh, discussion. But I am 
I am way too busy these Listen, days. Tony, you are always welcome on the channel. So anyways, thank you guys all for watching. Thank you, Tony, again. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy it. With that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.